As the historian for Duke Power Company, Dennis Lawson has a treasure trove of artifacts at his fingertips. This stove was one of the first electric models on the market, and some folks might remember using this machine to iron clothes. Today it seems everyone benefits from electricity, but Lawson says that wasn't always the case. And uh, we had to convince uh, those textile owners that it was more economically feasible to convert to electricity. But people at that day did not trust electricity. Uh, they thought it gave off emanations. It was, it was dangerous. Duke Power is celebrating its 100th anniversary. James Buchanan, Buck Duke, and Dr. Gil Wiley formed the company. The first hydroelectric power plant they opened was in 1907 at Great Falls in Chester County. Exactly, the fall of the water, the drop. Of course, that falling water uh, provides energy. And our idea was to harness that energy. We called it white gold. And uh, Dr. Wiley and J.B. Duke, uh, they just cut, could not abide wasted water. With no water wasted, Duke Power was able to set up a grid of transmission lines throughout the region. Company President Ruth Shaw says that action, a century ago, set in motion the way the Piedmont looks today. Well, it basically transformed the face of the Piedmont Carolinas as more and more hydroelectric uh, electric stations were established along the Catawba and their power hooked up to uh, power mills, jobs were provided, and the whole economy was transformed. Textile mills moved here from New England to the Carolinas. Uh, it was sort of the economic development coups of the 20th century. At the time, each of Duke's plants powered one textile mill. An old abandoned mill sits across from the Great Falls Station. But soon the company started finding other customers. And uh, as each mill would convert, Typically, the mill owners would say, well, we're, if you come into our mill, you have to electrify our mill village, which meant uh, running the distribution lines. And that's how uh, the residential aspect got started. Today, the station at Great Falls and the rest of Duke's hydroelectric plants only generate 1% of the company's output. A skeletal crew works to maintain Great Falls. Dr. Shaw says as the company moved into the coal-fired and nuclear plants, it maintained one key mission. Throughout its history, Duke Power has been involved with economic development, providing competitively priced electricity, helping to reach out to businesses that might locate in their area. Just as we helped bring cotton textile manufacturing to the region 100 years ago, today we're helping to replace parts of that industry that have departed the region. We're working with automotive manufacturers, with plastics, with companies in rubber manufacturing as well for the next generation of manufacturing in the Carolinas.